Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org, and in this video I'm going to be installing MongoDB on three virtual servers, which they are going to be a replica set, so I'll be doing that in the future. But for this video, I'm just going to be using Ansible to run a playbook to install those uh, MongoDB on those three servers. So pretty straightforward, and uh, let's get started. Just to also show, uh, just using Ansible Tower here, this isn't really an Ansible Tower video. Uh, more just to go over the playbook to install MongoDB. So here it is. This is a playbook. We can go through it. So YAML conventions is three dashes is an indicator that the content starts, and then three dots are an indicator that the content finishes. So you don't have to put that in, but it's kind of good practice to get into just uh, just to have there. So what we have become is true. This is because I have an Ansible user on all of my servers and I need to use sudo to install uh, the packages and create the repository file. So that's what become is all about. Next, nothing too different here, just a task to upgrade the packages with yum module. And then here, this is the thing that's a little different is we're adding a repository file and this is what this yum repository module is so the file name that that's going to be is mongodb uh, here and then the description and then the important parts is well the file is important too uh, is the URL to that repository and then the gpg key for that to verify it. Next thing is just installing MongoDB and last we're going to be using the service module to via systemd to enable the service and so it's persistent on reboots and then start the service uh, right away. So let me show here. This is if you were going to do this manually, you'd have to create this file like it says here, Etsy yum repos D. And then this is what the one task in my playbook is going to, it's going to automatically create that, this one here. So that's kind of really the only different thing. And just a little background is some distributions, depending on what kind of software they have, it's a lot of the time earlier versions it's not the newest so like Mongo is not I don't think it's in any standard uh, distribution repositories but for example Postgres uh, PostgreSQL database that is and the newest version of Postgres I believe is 12 12 dot something well 9 and 10 one of those are going to be the Postgres versions if you did just via a distribution like without adding your own without adding your own uh, repository file so if you just did you know you install your distro whatever it is you go yum install Postgres uh, PostgreSQL server or whatever the specific thing is you're kind of at the mercy of what they're going to give you so adding these repository files gives you more control you know what you're going to get from there so that's just a little bit of background on that. So that's a playbook and all I'm going to do is run it, we'll pause it, we'll see where we're at at that point. So let me just do that now. And we're back and that was pretty quick because I only did on Mongo D1 so I already did this on Mongo D0 and 2 with the same playbook, I didn't change anything and for some crazy reason Mongo D1 was just having like, there shouldn't be any changes, but it was having problems. So basically, didn't do anything else, just uh, re-ran it again. And you see in where are we at? 36 seconds, uh, successfully installed Mongo on really just uh, server one here. So the thing is, this, this shows successful. So I can go back, let me show you here. It looks like a mess of failed, but what'll happen is 
everything has to succeed in order for it to show that it was successful. There's no partials, just to be aware. So this was the issue that I was talking about. But there shouldn't be, that should be okay now, and we'll test it out. But just another quick thing is, you know, if you're, if you're updating like 20 servers, and for example, say one of your servers is turned off, you're, you're going to have 19 successful updates or whatever you're doing to those. That one failure is going to show at least an Ansible tower that it failed here. So just be aware of that. This is I'm specifically talking about Ansible Tower here. So let's go to Mongo D1 and let's just confirm that it's working. So this is Mongo D0. As you can see, it's up and running, 446, how I want it to be. So I still have to set up authentication and, and other stuff like that, but at least these are installed on these three. Uh, so let's get to this, just do a final confirmation. Oh, not that. Mongo. There you go. So Mongo is the client. Mongo D is the well the server basically. So Mongo D is running. So here four four six. Very good. So this is the service here that's running. And that's what we want. So quick video for this one, just uh, pretty simple. I mean, if you think about it, it would have taken maybe a minute or two to like run the whole playbook on, on both or on all three instead of just the one. But I mean, if you think about having the timing that it takes to create the repository file and then install and go through all that stuff. And then do the system CTL. I mean, it's not outrageous. You could probably do all three in like 15 minutes. But when you can do it in two, I mean, I think that's better. And this also allows centralized control from Ansible itself, where you don't have to be bouncing from one server to another to another. If you need to perform operations as a group, like we did here, that's what Ansible is all about. So that's all I had in this video. And stay tuned for future videos.